Hey everybody, welcome back to the shop. I uh, hope everybody enjoyed the shop tour last week. Got a lot of good comments, a lot of views. So I'm assuming it went over well. Um, best part is, you ain't even seen it all. <laughs> I got so much stuff in so many different places. You just saw, you saw the majority, but uh, there's still a few hidden treasures laying around. So, back to the bench. What do we got going on here? Um, I did not do an update video on this last week, uh, mainly because I put up the shop tour video, but also because the work that I did get done to it last week really wasn't worth showing. Um, mainly I finished up the tail section area, um, got the block and everything put on, everything is sanded, everything is nice and smooth. Uh, ran into a hiccup on the back end here, because where the elevator comes up to here, it was too thick. Don't know how it happened, don't know why. So it might be kind of hard to see. You can see right here where I had to double up the sheeting on top and bottom to about this point right here. Then I just blended it into the stab so it didn't have a, you know, a nasty step. It just kind of transitions. I didn't want to do that, but unfortunately I had to. Don't know, don't know why that all came about, but oh well. Had to be done. No big deal though. So the back end is pretty much finished. Just needs a little bit of final sanding in all my fillet areas. And you can see there's a little, a couple little bare spots that need to need to have a little bit more filler put in there. But uh, it's looking pretty good. Uh, before we continue here on everybody's favorite TV that's always playing in the background, we have another uh, fellow subscriber. And somebody that I'm subscribed to as well. This is Bayona's RC World. Uh, this guy lives on the island of Guam. For those that don't know uh, where that is, is out at uh, uh, island in the Pacific. This guy is awesome. Um, somebody else that I'm sure that uh, him and me were separated at birth somehow, because he likes building older kits. And he is a master modeler, as you can see here. This is he's working on a top flight Cessna. Um, this, I, if I remember right, I think he said this was his first airplane he's ever glassed and painted, and it's absolutely gorgeous. Um, he's already done the maiden. This is an older video, but absolutely fantastic. He likes building old Goldberg kits, and he's excellent with monocoat. So that's how I know we have to be related. But anyways, Bayona's RC World. Check them out. Lots of good content. So back to this. What have I been up to? Well, since the last time, I have started on doing the wing fairing. And when I started, when I started this, I did these part, this part first, which is the there's a former that comes out right here, and I wanted to do this this area first before I started doing the rest. And the key to this, the key to success, is this right here. A paper template. This is uh, just an old piece of cover stock from my printing days a long time ago. And when you make a template and get that template to fit just like you want, it's a no-brainer. The beautiful thing is, this fits perfect on the other side. And once you get that template cut, get the way you want it, you stick it on your balsa, cut it out, stick it on there and glue it. It doesn't get any easier than that. I bet you guys are hating that music in the background though. <laughs> oh, check it out. Spraying some blue. Awesome. Um, so I went ahead and got the bottom done first. A um, lot of interesting uh, shapes and curves down here. But everything is a compound curved, except for this up here. This is all concaved up top, but this is all compound on the bottom. Uh, so everything went in relatively easy. Um, just a little bit of filler, just where the this where they come together and transition into each other. Where you can see it's kind of a weird... <coughs> oh, excuse me. Kind of a weird situation. The filler just kind of helps the transition out a little bit. And for those that are wondering, why are these big icky holes here? Well, I'm lazy, 
and I know there's a million and one different ways of attaching a wing like this, this is the way I did it. So now when the wing's on there, I got just enough room to slide that bolt in there. I can get it screwed almost all the way in with my fingers and then just uh, stick my Allen wrench in there and tighten it. It doesn't look the greatest, but hey, it's the bottom of the airplane. Is it, it is what it is. Not going to bother me. I'm not going to lose any sleep over it. So, yep, this is all sheeted. Um, not the final. It's not. It's filled in just to get everything blended right, but it's going to need one more final coat of filler just to blend everything in. Uh, but I'm not going to do that until the top's finished. Now, as far as the top goes, this is a different situation. I did use a template to give me kind of my rough uh, shape that I needed. Um, but we got to keep in mind is this is curved this way and it's curved this way. So to go from something flat to making this shape is not going to work. I mean, let's, let's sight down it real quick here. As you can see, it's, uh, it's an interesting shape. So the way I did it is by using the template that got me the rough piece that goes in there. So once I cut the piece, once I cut the piece off the template, I sprayed it with some glass cleaner and rubber banded the uh, the sheeting because the grain is running this way. I rubber banded the sheeting to that uh, paint can so it made it, so it formed it into a curved shape because there's there's ammonia in the glass cleaner and that really soaks into that wood and when you start to form it like that it keeps that shape so once i let it set for about an hour um now i have a piece of sheeting that is nice and curved and i was able to put it in there and there's a lot of gaps you can't see it because it's under this first coat of oh, oh excuse me it's under this first coat of filler but it does not look pretty this piece of wood that's in here is not pretty and that's fine. I'll tell you why. Because instead of spending hours trying to cut this and trim it so it fits exactly perfect, I don't care about that. I got it in there to give a solid... The, the wood that's behind this uh, little bit of filler here is just used as a base. Something for this filler to sit on. So once that wood is in place, I take... This is just your uh, your everyday... Um, household spackle. So it's really soft, kind of spongy, easy to apply, easy to sand. It's not strong, but I'll get to that in a minute. I'm using this just to fill in the gaps and to kind of give it, and just by going over it with your hands like this when you're applying it, it's filling in the low spots. It's making, it's, it's making the curves that you put into it with your hand. So once this is all sanded, you won't see how icky and stupid this piece of balsa under here really looked. It'll be a nice, smooth, blended finish. Now, I am going to be covering this fillet. I was originally going to glass it and blend it into the fuselage and paint it, cover the fuse, paint the, paint the fairing. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to cover the whole thing. So in order to do that, once this is sanded smooth and this is all finished, you know, and this has already been done to the rest of it. I'll sand it smooth, and then just using some Zap CA, um, squirt some on there, just kind of smear it around with my fingers, and the CA is going to saturate this spackle, and it's going to seal it, and it's going to harden it. Then I'll be able to hit it with some 220 to smooth it out, but I'm not done yet. Once that's done, I'm going to use my Elmer's wood filler that is just awesome stuff. It's nice and solid, covering sticks to it good. So I'm going to take some of that Elmer's filler, and I'm going to thin it out big time with water, so it's about the uh, consistency of epoxy. And then I'll brush that on so it's going on really thin, real smooth already. And then when I sand that smooth, that will be the surface that I'm putting covering on. And everything underneath will be nice and hard, nice and smooth, and it'll just it'll just turn out perfect so that's so that's looking good 
So even though I did the shop tour last week, um, somebody followed me home yesterday. This little, little big guy here. Um, he's actually kind of an old man for an RC airplane because uh, um, he's in his upper 30s now. Huh, about my age. Can anybody guess what this is? Let's just look at it briefly. Can anybody tell me what this airplane is? Okay, well it's a Diablo. So if you guessed, congratulations, you know your, you know your airplanes. Now what kit is this? This is not a cheap Chinese ARF. This is an old pilot kit from the, from the mid eighties, early to mid eighties. Um, and no, it's not the, it's not the pilot that everybody's familiar with now that makes those almost ready to fail airplanes. Um, this is pilot models, uh, very good quality kits back in the day. Um, the airplanes came out a little on the heavy side, but you know, back then for, for those of us that were flying gas, you had to build a kind of a heavier solid airplane to accommodate our freaking boat anchor and shaker engines that we used back then. So the fact that it's built a little stout does not bother me one bit. The condition is not bad. The cowl needs to be completely redone. Um, some of the covering has yellowed in a few spots, which doesn't bother me too much. I've done a little bit of shrinking to the covering just to see how it was going to react. And I do know it's monocoat just by the way that it shrinks. Um, there's a few spots where there were patches that weren't done very well that I'll redo. But I don't have any interest in redoing the whole airplane. Um, I just don't want to. I think I can doll it up and patch it up. Kind of like I did with my Aeromaster. If you go back uh, last year um, and see how I redid that airplane. And it looks it looks great. Even though there's got a lot of patches. If you do it right, it'll look good. Um, so there, there needs to be some patch work done on it. Especially on the fuselage here. Um, but I cleaned up some spots and did some shrinking. The stab I actually polished. I mean, look at that. This this is old covering, and that is just shiny and silky as can be. So I know I can make it look good. Um, I'm ninety percent sure that this has been cut for a G62, and I just so happen to have a bunch of G62s laying around. So in theory, I should be able to get this thing set up and going pretty pretty easily um though i'm trying my best not to get distracted i want to get other projects finished before i start something like this but here's something funny look at that dinky little landing gear the landing gear on my tiger 60 is bigger than that so i don't know where those cute little guys came from but they gotta go that's no big deal I can find a set of landing gear that'll fit just fine. So just showing you another another project that made it uh, made it to the hangar. This is one of those planes I've been looking for for a long time. And I've had several opportunities to get one, either in kit form or ready to fly or crashed or whatever. Um, but the ones I found in the past, they just weren't right. Either the price wasn't right or something wasn't right. This one fell into place. It was only a two-hour drive to go get it. So no big deal. So cool. We'll get to that someday. So I'll probably be doing another video around Christmas time. And hopefully, uh, hopefully I'll have this finished. That's kind of my goal. As long as the weather stays good this week where I don't have to get up early and do any snow removal at work, um, I'll be able to get some work done on this. So hopefully for the next video, it'll have the wings on the airplane. All this will be sanded smooth and fitted. That's what I'm shooting for. So until the next time, see ya.